should we get stuck into these pro-Palestine uh, Palestine protests? Suella Braverman, of course, some weeks ago called them hate marches. Uh, but there's one taking place again in London today, uh, calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Protesters, uh, as we speak, are filling the streets of the capital, waving Palestinian flags and holding placards calling for Palestinian freedom and an end to the war in Gaza. And I might add, by the way, you're probably going to find one or two um, idiots waving pro-Hamas or pro-Houthi rebel placards or flags as well. Joining me now is uh, GB News reporter Will Hollis, who's on the ground in London. Will, good afternoon, my friend. What's going on? Well, there's expected to be hundreds of thousands of people here joining this march today. It's the ninth global day of action. Global because this kind of a march is happening across the entire world, not just happening here in the capital city, London. And where we are right now is just on the edge of Hard Park. And you can see in the background that there are literally hundreds, thousands of people passing us right now. And this is just one small section of a very long parade that is snapping taking down towards the Israeli embassy. Now, this has been organised by the Stop the War Coalition and also the Palestine Solidarity Campaign. Now, why is it important that they're heading towards the Israeli embassy? Well, they're, they're calling for an immediate ceasefire, and they've been doing so every month or so since those attacks uh, took place on the 7th of October, where around 1,200 people were killed in Israel by Hamas. Since then, though, 28,000 people have been killed in the conflict since most of them Palestinian men, uh, women and children as Israel goes into Gaza Strip trying to, as they would say, wipe out Hamas because they say that you can't have peace without wiping out Hamas. So what you can see right now in front of us is a sea of Palestinian flags, red, black, white and green, and they're heading down Park Lane right now. What you'll also be able to see is a lot of yellow jackets because that's the police. Now, the commander of the this particular um, protest, the Met Police officer in charge, says that the conflict in the Middle East continues to have a polarising and profound effect on the capital city. There are 1,500 police patrolling the streets of the capital today, and that includes for things like football. But the commander says that there is a lot of them that are working specifically on this protest. Now, as you said, Ben, in the intro, what they're mainly looking for is anything that incites hatred, anything that incites racism or glorifies the prescribed terrorist organization which is Hamas. This week we saw that go to the court. Those three people uh, convicted of terror charges for displaying paragliders on their bodies as well on placards. So they've actually been giving out flyers to tell people what is within the law and what isn't. They said you can have a voice, you can protest, you can let people know what you think but you can't incite racism or hatred. Now why is this all particularly important this week Ben? Well in Parliament, we're going to be seeing another vote on a ceasefire as the SNP puts forward that motion. And a lot of eyes will be on Keir Starmer and whether he'll be telling his MPs to abstain in that vote. Bill Hollis on the ground in London, thanks very much. It's almost like a lottery every Saturday afternoon, isn't it? How many people are going to be nicked or, uh, you know, pulled up for, for spewing uh, hateful rhetoric? Um, let's go to Scotland, where our Scottish reporter Tony Maguire is reporting on the pro-Palestine march up there. Um, is it the case that that march is going to end up or at least pass the Scottish Labour conference, Tony? Yes, good afternoon. That is indeed the case. I'm here at the Scottish Event Centre on the Clyde side of Glasgow and this is where the march is headed. From about one o'clock this afternoon, Scottish-Palestinian Solidarity Campaign protesters are going to march from the centre of Glasgow here to the Clyde side where the Scottish Labour Conference has been happening. Now yesterday, Anna Sarwar, Scottish Labour leader, he gave a, a rousing 70-minute speech in which he called again for an an immediate ceasefire and he urged everybody to be able to separate the people of Gaza as well from Hamas as well as the people of Israel from Benjamin Netanyahu's government which he said neither of those groups want peace whatsoever. Now um, here at Scottish Labour Conference today a motion was passed that support, would support a ceasefire um, and the vote and certainly SNP were out early this morning campaigning for Scottish Labour to whip essentially the two 
Labour M uh, MPs north of the border here in that vote when it hits the Commons next week. Now, we're still a little while away from seeing the protest um, arrive here at the SEC. At the minute, the, the loudest group, and unfortunately, is the group heading into the wedding show, which is happening behind me. But needless to say, a large Police Scotland presence here to make sure that no civilians or any of the delegates of the Labour Party are caught in any kind of altercations. So far peaceful here, but it's early days in Glasgow. Tony Maguire in Scotland, thanks very much. Uh, it's a great advert, isn't it, for, uh, for London? Come to London, come shopping down Oxford Street or come and enjoy yourself uh, somewhere down Regent Street and fill your boots. But uh, maybe not, there's thousands of people waving Palestinian flags and, you know, as I said, some supporting the Houthis or Hamas in the process.